This case study involves a school in Stockton on Tees and year eight students who were learning maths specifically the brief from the teacher looked at topics of algebra statistics and charts and graphs and although it's uh, covered in the key stage three curriculum she pointed out in the brief that at the time the subject was being taught by non-specialists non-math specialists and therefore much of what was delivered was really guided by the textbook that they were using and she said that her ideal outcome was students focusing or feeling like they were focusing more on a project or a challenge rather than just running through the curriculum topics and you know here are the topics that they have to get through that's the school's own material and in the textbook it's amplified perfectly good textbook with information and exercises running through those various uh, aspects of the subject and including exercises for the students which are actually oddly enough labelled real and although they're describing what could be real situations clearly they're not they're, they're scenarios or let's imagine situations that the students are being given to demonstrate what they've learned we ultimately decided we would approach the canal and river trust as the partner for this project and mainly because they run something called the Tees barrage a major engineering project on the river uh, and just a mile or so from the school and we communicated with the canal and river trust who have a very good education program and and part of the team involves liaising with schools so we we made some contact there were some communication difficulties as you can see in this this email here we kind of summarize what it is we felt we needed uh, statistics about the barrage how it's designed there was stuff already loads of stuff around about the Tees barrage because it's such a significant um, engineering program saying and recognizing that they would have more information themselves we actually sent some examples of projects which had a similar approach resulted in a tangible outcome a, a meaningful project uh, we also suggested what the project the challenge might focus on you know the tidal flow because that's what the barrage is all about and maybe even the fact that it's, it's a resource for, which attracts people from the community and tourists and even things like the way it manages the passage of salmon up and down the river so in the classroom resources we clearly introduce the organization there, there, these are just a selection of the slides but we there was something right at the outset to explain who the canal and river trust were clearly many of these youngsters are not only not heard of the canal and river trust but had never really considered an organization like that might be a potential employer with some really interesting jobs so they bring it down to a local level to explain that they have responsibility for this stretch of the river and that they're also responsible for this piece of engineering just a short distance from the school and it explains that it's not just about managing the flow of the water but it's used for recreation purposes as a white water center a spectacular white water center uh, built into that and it's about making the place more attractive too and, and more valuable to the local community there's also something about the fact that they have to manage the number of seals which eat the salmon the fishermen want to pull about the water uh, so they have to manage that sensitively and they have all these volunteers and visitors that that come to see the thing so within that there's opportunities to do something which relates to the topic because there are statistics around all of that and within the presentation there was a summary of some of the statistics uh, about the visitors about the the way the uh, structure has been put together and then there was a brilliant little video from this team leader who in a very impromptu way just introduced himself his team what their role is and what the tees barrage is about and he sets this challenge which is in his words asking the students to work as small teams to use the facts and figures the data that they're going to provide applying what they've learned about statistics and then put that in the form of graphs and pictograms so that it can be attractive and clear for the visitors and in his little video clip he talks about how visitors come to particularly once a year when they have an open day or weekend actually and they need to convey information alongside his video we also provided some additional statistics which they provided 
about these fish uh, on the river, the uh, log showing the uh, water levels. And he also provided some additional information about the Tees Barrage, which obviously came across in a much more personal and compelling way. Let's hear from him. So first of all, I'll give you a bit of information about the Tees Barrage. If you can see the river upstream, we like to maintain that river level all the time. And then if you look downstream, you can see the barrage and the water going over the gates and downstream is tidal. So that tide now is coming in. So when that tide comes in, sometimes it gets above the river level. So we need to lift the gates fully up so that salt water can encroach into the fresh water. Now that all depends on the moon. If we've got a full moon, we're in large spring tides and I'm sure your teachers will explain a bit more about this to you. So if we've got a large moon, a full moon, we're on a spring tide, which means the tides come in higher and go lower. And if we're on a neap tide, that's when there's only a crescent of a moon in the sky, we get very little tides, so the incoming tide doesn't get as high. So we've got to work out what tides are happening at certain times so we know how much water to release and how far to lift the gates up. So if we have a lot of water coming down the river, we lower the gates, let the water go, but when the tide's coming in, we've got to lift those gates, so we've got to work out how much water we can release before the gates have got to be lifted. So that's another challenge in itself, but I'm sure if you think about it, you'll be able to work it out and give us some good statistics. So the students in the class responded to that challenge. They, they used the data, they prepared their graphs and charts, and they were then presented in a literally an exhibition event in the school hall where in their teams they created a small display knowing that visitors from the canal and river trust would be arriving to talk a bit more about what they did and about the organization and to look at their work and to talk to them about their work so they knew an expert audience was going to look at scrutinize and ask them about what they'd done and we'll hear in a minute from, from the youngsters, but it's interesting to see what they, the organisation said in response to being involved in this event. Bear in mind, they already do work with schools, so they're, they're familiar with this. They took photographs and they shared some of those. We found the project really inspiring. All too often, it's easy for specialists to get bogged down in the technical facts and figures of a site or operation. This project has given us the opportunity to hand that data over to the students who have then examined the information and explored ways of explaining it to a wider audience. In order to do that successfully, they first had to get to grips with the details themselves before then trying to find the best way through graphs and charts and text or imagery to get the information across. Their work, approach and feedback will be invaluable to, you, to us as we look at providing greater levels of interpretation at the barrage. And I think that was one of the things that was most compelling for the youngsters. After they'd done the work to hear that they really were going to use the information and actually it was in response to the quality of work that they produced. Let's hear the reaction from the students themselves. I've been making a poster about the Tees Barrage, what okay. works. So what was the point of your poster? I mean, your, po your poster's here. What did your poster tell us? Um, about the water flow. So tell me about the water flow. You, you've got some, some statistics from the Tees Barrage. Yeah, it tells us about the construction of the Tees Barrage. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, about the engineering of it all. Yeah. So what do you remember of the statistics you were given, Jim? We put it all in graphs. How did you decide how to do that? Uh, well, we put all the data on a computer and transferred it into graphs. So it's easy to read, easy to read the data. Were you in a maths lesson? Yeah. Is this maths? Do you have yeah. to learn this stuff? Yeah, in maths, yeah. Did it feel like a maths lesson when you were doing that? Yeah, it did a bit, yeah. Did it, did it, was it different? No, not really. It just felt like a normal maths lesson. So it's what you'd normally learn? Yeah. Okay. Do you normally get asked by an organisation like the Tees Barrage to help them with... Oh, you heard, actually, the lady just now from Canal and Rivers Trust saying they want your help, they can use this information in their visitor centre. Is that normal? No, it's our first time doing something like this. So what difference does it make? Tell me what the difference is. Well, 
we've, we can use more creative skills whilst doing our maths lessons, which is better for us because we're learning more skills for different lessons as well. You said you worked in, uh, as a team, and here you are, there's uh, uh, five of you, yeah. six, sorry, six of you. Uh, so you had to work as a team. Was that easy? Uh, yeah, because we all got along. So you're all friends already. What roles did you have? Well, they, them two had the creativity. I, she was the leader. I was helping Tegan with the leader, and they were like the, the brains. Okay, the brains. I'm sure you're all the brains, but uh, you're going to have to fill out a, an evaluation form a little later on this morning. What will you say you got from this, most you personally? Um, I got skills. Such as? Like how to do pie charts and how to like cooperate in a team. So it's not just about maths. Cooperation sounds like teamwork and skills. What did you learn about maths? I learned, I learned to like how to solve the pie charts and like how to do the graphs. So you're learning about graphs and charts and things, but it wasn't from a textbook, was it? No. But you normally have a textbook. You have a textbook as well. Yeah. So what's the difference between a textbook and doing this? Well, when we did this, it was more based on computers, and we had to use the data from the book that, that we got, transfer it onto the computer, then transfer it onto the graphs, and then transfer it onto the poster. And finally, you're the team leader, I gather. Yep. So how did you feel about doing that? Um, it was a very... It wasn't a hard job, it was a very good job because I got to um, talk to everyone and how they felt and what they'd like to do. How did you end up as team leader? Um, we all decided, we all sort of talked between us and then um, we went off who had like, the best cooperation skills. Did you think you did a good job? Yeah. Well done.